being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life, which, if you go back to chapter 1, was promised when? Before the world began. So one gospel that God planned and purposed before the world began. And now, through Jesus Christ, it becomes a reality. To all those who believe and receive His grace and His mercy. Isn't that tremendous? It's wonderful. It's good to be saved. It's wonderful to be a Christian, to be forgiven and justified and reconciled. Are you reconciled to God? Have you made peace with God through Jesus Christ? Because those that are outside of Christ, you are His enemy. You're His enemy. And you know what God is going to do with His enemy when He returns? He's going to destroy them. We'll look at that toward the end. But He will destroy them. You know, Jesus didn't say repent and do good works, did He? What did Jesus say? Repent and believe the gospel. That's the key. But many people believe that, uh, you know, that they can actually return to the Lord by showing their good works. And God won't accept it. Remember, he gave a parable between the religious man or, or, or the Pharisee and the, and the publican. And, and he showed the difference between one boasting in his re re religiosity and the other one beating his hand upon his chest and saying to God, have mercy upon me, a what? Sinner. But many believe. And you know what Isaiah says this? Isaiah 64 verse 6, But we are all as unclean thing, and all our righteousness is like filthy rags. Everything that we have to offer to God at best is like pus kill rags. There's nothing that we can do to earn our way to God or to merit His mercy. It's what Jesus has done. And it's what, through Jesus that we can be saved. Uh, the Bible says very clearly, By grace are you saved through what? Faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of what? Works, lest any man should boast. I met a man that was brought up Methodist uh, on Saturday. And I said, if you were to die today, do you know where you're going to go? He said, I'll be going to heaven. I said, how are you going to get there? He said, I'm a good person. By the time I finished presenting the gospel and showing him this verse, I got up my phone and I said, let's read this together. And it was so clear as crystal. And you can see the penny dropped. It's amazing what God's word can do in the heart of a person. Changes everything. Changes our thinking. We're thinking majority of the world thinks that they're going to get to heaven by their good works. And the reason why Paul here is making that mention is, hey, listen, no one's going to get to heaven by their good works or by their own merit. No one's going to boast before God. There's, a, there's no boasting other in the cross. God forbid that's your glory. Save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's no glory outside of the cross. Not for the Old Testament saints or the New Testament saints. There's no glory. Listen, let me tell you something. Read David. Read the Psalms and see. By the way, we're told to read the Psalms. We're told to sing the Psalms. We're told to encourage one another with the Psalms because there lies prophecy of the Savior, Jesus Christ. And David knew that there's no mercy outside of the Lord. David, David saw it. Romans 4 makes it very clear. Paul alluding to David that David saw it. Very clear. All you've got to do is read your Bible. Sometimes, this is what happens, sometimes we go beyond just reading the Scriptures and taking them for what they are, and people want to go and cast their judgment or their private interpretation, and it just causes confusion. But if you just pick up your Bible sometimes and you read it, it doesn't need interpretation. You read it and it's there. And it's clear. And you can't run away from this verse. We're saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. If you can be saved by your own merit, by your own works, by your own uh, goodwill, then why did Jesus suffer and die on the cross? Some people believe that they can be saved by keeping the Ten Commandments. But that's not true because we've broken them. And we're now the lawbreakers. And Paul says to the Galatians in Galatians chapter 2, verse 21, uh, he says this, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead for what? In vain, in for nothing. If you can get saved by your own merit and doing good and all the rest of that, keeping the law, then why did Jesus come? A man said yesterday, good question. Oh, let me tell you why he came. He suffered. 
and he died for you. For you. Listen, you can't go by, you can't go past the cross. You pass the cross, you're finished. You've got to via the cross. You've got to go via the cross. You pass the cross, you're gone. You're finished. 